Hey everyone, welcome to the Life of the Straits. This is our first ever of our virtual series of the Life of the Straits of Mackinac, exploring the amazing resources and cultural stuff all around. Now you can see I'm right here on the beach today at the Mackinac Bridge behind me. This is an amazing little park right down here on the shoreline, almost under the bridge. It's where the entrance to the Michelin Mackinac Fort is. It's where there's a great old lighthouse you can check out. And I've been enjoying the whole day on the beach here just hanging out. Now, of course, today we're going to be diving right into some of the amazing things that are right here on the Straits, including the magnificent Mighty Mac right behind us. So I'm just going to give you a little overview before we hand it off to our great friend Leanne. Now, if you see here, this is the Straits of Mackinac. A strait is pretty much just a narrow crossing. And there's a lot of different definitions for where exactly the Straits of Mackinac start or end, but most people agree it's at least the part right underneath the bridge between Mackinac City and St. Ignace and between the lower and upper peninsula of Michigan. Now, if I share with you another map from NOAA, you'll see a little bit more detail. And we really do like to think of the Straits as all the way from Wilderness Park and Brevoort all the way over to the Drummond Island and Rogers City area. This is a really nice uh, map here and there's so many amazing features absolutely incredible like I said I'm down in Mackinac City today and so you'll find me right down here right down here hanging out in the beautiful heart of Mackinac City in this region right down here but we're going to explore a whole lot more besides the amazing fort and bridge that are here we'll tackle Mackinac Island later and there. There are just so many spectacular places that we are going to explore. You know, like here, we'll zoom in. This is the Lachino Islands, just to give you a taste. It's a chain of over 30 islands that are super important habitat for all sorts of fish nurseries, like bass and pike, um, but also for herring and whitefish. And so it's a really important place, all these shallows for fish. Um, some of the islands, like over here on Gull Island, right in the Straits. It's one of the largest breeding gull colonies of herring gulls in all the region. Uh, and so this is a really important area for people, for plants, for animals, um, and it has an amazing rich history. We can't wait to dive into some of those specifics with you um, throughout the next five weeks as we explore the Straits of Mackinac. So there's my little spiel. I just wanted to say I'm so excited that we get to explore this region. I hope you're excited too. Um, we definitely want you to participate through the Q&A and the polls. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Leanne to uh, give us a little bit of some amazing facts today about the Mackinac Bridge. Okay, thanks Elliot. <laughs> So you should now be seeing probably one of the most important connecting infrastructures that we have uh, here in the Straits of Mackinac, and that is the Mackinac Bridge. So I'm curious, um, I earlier I asked you if you could please find the chat um, and put in the chat, uh, if you would for me, how many times you have been across the Mackinac Bridge. So if you've done it a lot, you can say like once per week, once a month, uh, never, it's five times, whatever it is for you. If you could just take a moment and put that in the chat, that would be really great. Wow. Excellent. So it's great to see we have some that have never been across it and some that it's a routine thing that they do quite often. So I would like to take us and invite you to go with me on a virtual road trip across the bridge. So for Zeke, who's never done this, so Zeke, come with me. We're going to do this virtually. So I have a fun little video here to play and I'm going to share with you some information um, about the bridge as we go across. So welcome to the Mackinac Bridge, also known as the Mighty Mac or Big Mac. This bridge is one of Michigan's most recognized landmarks. It is the fifth longest suspension bridge in the world and considered a modern marvel. This engineered masterpiece was inspired by New York's Brooklyn Bridge and Scotland's first of four. The total length of the bridge is 26,372 feet or if you're like me, it makes more sense than miles. It's five miles from shore to shore. The structure took approximately 48 months to complete with over 3,500 workers and quite a little 
total price tag of $99.8 million. Yikes! It opened to traffic on November 1st, 1957. And right now, most recent figures estimate that over half a million cars cross the bridge a month. So part of the reason why they chose a suspension bridge for our Mighty Mac Bridge was because it needs to be able to accommodate wind, changing temperature, and weight. So in the center part of this bridge, it is possible for it to move as much as 35 feet to the east or to the west. Okay, no fear, it doesn't sway back and forth. It will gently move as the wind pushes, and when the winds subside, the weight of the cars and the structures of the garage will move it back to center. So it's designed to give in the wind. Um, and it does that very slowly. Structure can support 38,486 tons, or one ton per linear foot of roadway. So that's really reassuring since we are now currently driving across this bridge. So it's perfectly safe and can handle our weight. So now you're starting to see alongside of us the cables that are going up and down in the large cable that runs at the top up to the big towers. This is the suspension portion of the bridge. So the length of the sus suspension bridge is 8,614 feet or a little over 1.6 miles. The length of the cable bent pier to cable bend pier is 7,400 feet and the length of the main span between the towers, so the big tower we see in front of us right now and the other one we passed over, so the the length between those is 3,800 feet or just a little under three quarters of a mile. So the width of this road, there's actually four lanes, as you can see, um, it's 54 feet. So there's plenty of room to fit on four spans all the way across. The towers, like the one we're passing over right now, tower 552 feet above the water, or basically a 39-story building. And then below the water, the piers go down another 200 feet. So if you add this all together, you basically have a 53-story building, tall building, um, that's helping to support the bridge and the suspension. So I hope you enjoyed our ride across the bridge. All right, so why did we build a bridge? Well, connectivity, right? They wanted to connect the lower peninsula to the upper peninsula. Um, like somebody said earlier, the upper peninsula is a great, beautiful place to go for vacations. Lots of folks go up there for hunting. There's lots of commerce that needed to get from the lower peninsula to the upper peninsula. So I found it really interesting when I was doing the research that um, way back, 1884, they had already been discussing the idea of building a bridge. Uh, so this picture that you're seeing here was actually printed in a newspaper in 1884 in, in Michigan. And this was an artist's drawing of what they thought the bridge could look like. It's amazing how close that is to what the bridge actually looks like today. So in the early discussion stages, they had some pretty crazy ideas. And here's one of them I wanted to share with you. I thought it was kind of fun to see. So one idea that they had was to go from Sheboygan, see the red arrow, to build a bridge across to Bois Blanc Island, and then, or we call it Boblo up here, and then from Boblo over to Round Island would be another bridge, and then another bridge from Round Island to Mackinac Island, and then from Mackinac Island over to St. Ignace. So can you imagine if that's what had happened, how different things would be, particularly for Mackinac Island that doesn't allow vehicles on it, it would be a very different world over there right now if this is what they had chosen to do. One of the other ideas that they talked about was having a floating tunnel. Not quite sure how that would have worked with the ships going through, but that's really an interesting idea. So I got kind of curious about how did people cross over from the lower peninsula to the upper peninsula before we had the Mackinac Bridge? So one of the ways was through the use of ferries. And in 1923, the Department of State Highways began a ferry service from Mackinac City over to St. Ignace. So basically, in effect, they created a highway over water. So this was one of a very unique thing. It was the first service of its kind to be offered by a state highway department in the United States. So in this picture, you see the ferry, the city of Sheboygan. It was one of many ferries. Um, this ferry could actually hold up to 85 cars. 
So something I found interesting was during the November deer hunting season, thousands of hunters would come to the docks to be able to get on a ferry to go over to the UP for hunting. And they would jam up and fill up the docks in all of the highways leading into Mackinac City or St. Ignace if they were coming down to the lower peninsula. And uh, there used to be vendors that would go car to car and sell pasties so that they could eat while they patiently waited for their turn to get on the ferry. So the ferries, they discovered in the five years after them opening that there was a tremendous amount of interest in being able to get from the lower peninsula to the upper peninsula. So the governor decided at that point, hey, let's do a study. Let's look at this again and see if we could feasibly build a bridge over the straits. Um, and one of the things that came back was that it would cost $30 million at that time. And so they said, nope, we can't afford this. So they, they totally dropped that idea. Well, I wanted to show you a brief timeline so you could get an idea of how long it took for the bridge to actually happen. So shortly after that, in 1934, again, this idea came up of how do we build a bridge? We need something to connect these two areas, um, very important area across the Straits of Mackinac. So at this point in time, they created the Mackinac Bridge Authority and asked them to do a feasibility study of building the bridge. So um, they did this whole study from 1936 to 1940, and this is when the idea of a direct route, so the current route that we have for a bridge, that's when that idea arose. And they did an in-depth study of that. Um, so uh, they presented that uh, initially to Michigan legislature, and Michigan legislature turned it down. Um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, again, and probably the most significant was the cost, the financial cost that it would take to build the bridge. So again, we had to wait. It was brought up again in 1951. Um, and at this point, the legislator finally approved this idea of building the bridge across the straits. However, the Korean War had just uh, was going on, and so they did not have the materials that they would need because of the wartime efforts. So they had to delay it. So construction actually was delayed until May 7th, 1954. So I gotta tell you, probably the biggest issue they had to overcome, as I've said all along, is the cost of building the bridge. So during the 1951, during that conversation, a really wise banker came up and said, let's sell bonds. So bonds are in essence where they, we as regular citizens would purchase a bond. So we would be loaning our money to the Michigan Bridge Authority to be able to build the bridge. And then they promised to pay it back to us with interest. So there was such great support for building the bridge that the entire cost of the bridge was funded through the sale of bonds. Um, so just keep in mind that, that the Bridge Authority had to eventually pay those bonds back, but that's initially how they got the money, was through people who invested it and uh, loaned their money for building that bridge. So very cool. All right, so I do have some pictures here. I thought it'd be fun for us to see like the progress of the bridge being built back in 1954. So construction began in 1954, I'm sorry, I forgot this. November 1st, 1957 is when the bridge opened for the first traffic to go across. So here we have the designer of the bridge was Dr. David B. Steinman. He is pictured here in front of the beginning of the bridge. And this is the building of the foundation. So there was two companies that were hired that did the majority of the work in building the bridge. The first company was Merritt, Chapman, and Scott Corporation. They were responsible for building all of the foundations. And in order to do this, it led to the mobilization of one of the largest bridge construction fleets ever assembled. Because again, they had to work on the water, right? So here you can see there's barges and cranes. And this is actually, in this picture, is the Kazon, um, so it's the building of the first Kazon for I believe the North Tower, yep, North Tower Foundation. So this, this piece that you're seeing, this clamshell, um, this rounded clamshell thing would go down like a cookie cutter into the soil at the bottom of the lake. And then they would go in with the clamshell um, cranes and excavate the dirt out and drop it on the outside of that circle. And so that's how they would clean out and be able to pour the foundations all the way down to the lake bottom. So it was like a cool giant cookie cutter. 
So the second company was responsible for all of the steel work, and this was the American Bridge Division of the United States Steel Corporation. Um, so they built all of the superstructure of the bridge. So the they would use the U.S. steel mills because um, they would all create various shapes and plates and bars and wires and cables of all the different steel that was necessary for the super section. So it's kind of cool to think about that the bridge, the Mackinac Bridge, really has parts and pieces that came from all over America because we had steel mills all over America and they were shipped in to be able to build this bridge. So very cool. Um, so here again is the North Mackinac Bridge Tower and the placing of the steel. So again, here you see the two towers are up. Those are very recognizable. And some more of the piers are being built. And then this is, so we're looking towards Mackinac City at this point, because we're looking south. So see all the piers that had to go into place that support the roadway. Now imagine working. Remember I said in the center part, it's like 200 feet. So they're probably not quite 200 feet above the water on this cable. It's pretty amazing building this catwalk. So this is a great picture of the huge cables that run. So the cable that you see there is actually made up of 12,580 individual cables. And so the circumference, so the, all the diameter all the way around that is 24.5 inches. So all of this cabling, when you add it all up for the bridge, it's 42,000 miles of cables. So if we put those end to end, we would reach almost two times around the circumference of the earth. So that is a lot of cabling. Here's kind of a cool winter picture because they worked through the winter months. So you can see the ice is starting to come either form or come off late winter. So I'm guessing probably starting to melt off. So here's a great view where you see all those suspension cables hanging down and they're starting to put into place those roadway trusses. So this is how they brought them in on the barge and then they would have to crane and lift them up into place. So here they are putting into place. You can see the road is starting to develop and show as they put into place the beams that support it. All right, so November 1st, 1957, the bridge opened. And I put on this picture, pay up, because remember, they borrowed money from lots of people to build this bridge. Um, that $99.8 million price tag to build this bridge came from, from everybody and anybody investing in those bonds. So you do have to pay a toll to cross the bridge. Um, I believe right now it's $4 for a car and then depending on the bigger you get, the more you have to pay. Um, so that money has been paying back the bonds. So the final bond was paid back in 1986. So from that point on, the money that is gathered from tolls goes towards the maintenance on the bridge and the upkeep for the bridge. So just remember when you go across the bridge, make sure you have some money because you gotta pay the toll. All right, so we're going to do a fun poll. Elliot's going to help me with this. Um, we, I have a series of 10 questions. It's OK if you don't know the answer. I sometimes call this our best guess, right? I probably didn't talk about some of this stuff. So it's totally OK to make your best guess on these. So Elliot, do I need to stop sharing? Nope. we'll start the first poll. Here we go. OK. During wintertime, the Mackinac Bridge Authority uses this on the bridge to help with traction during icy conditions. Salt, sand, brine, or nothing. Give us your best guess, everyone. Give it five more seconds. Put that in the poll there, and let's see. I got a lot of guesses for sand. What do we got, Leanne? You guys are correct. Sand is what they use. So normally on our highways, the Highway Road Commission uses salt. But on the bridge, they do not do that. Two reasons. First, it corrodes the steel on the bridge. And the second reason is they don't want the salt getting into the Great Lakes because that's right below the bridge. 
All right, let's do the next one, Elliot. Question two, when the wind reaches this mile per hour, the Mackinac Bridge Authority would most likely shut down the bridge. Are we looking at 20 miles per hour, 35, 50, or 65? Give it your best guesses. We're only gonna keep this one open for about five more seconds. Punch those answers in. Two, one, and let's see. Ooh, a lot more all over the place on this one. <laughs> Folks aren't so sure. That's right. That was a tough one. So whoever guessed 65 miles per hour, winner, winner, chicken dinner. You got it. Um, I was surprised too that it was that high. So usually when the wind gets between 20 to 35 miles per hour, um, the bridge authority will require vehicles to slow their speeds down when crossing the bridge. Um, when the wind gets over 35 miles per hour, they will require escorts for high profile vehicles, so like semi trucks or people with campers. Um, when they wind hits 50 miles per hour, um, most times high profile vehicles are not allowed to cross at that point in time. And it doesn't happen very often. And we have a friend on today, uh, Keith Ginnup, who works for the Bridge Authority. So when we get to the end, if we can remember, we might be able to ask him how many times he remembers the bridge being shut down for 65 mile per hour wind or higher. That's pretty fast wind. So, all right, let's do the next one, Elliot. All right, the typical speed limit for cars over the bridge is 35 miles an hour, 45, 55, or 70 miles per hour. If you've driven over the bridge, hopefully you know this. <laughs> Give it a couple more seconds here. We got lots of answers coming in. Three, two, one, all right. Ooh, Ooh, got a lot of right answers. Yeah, we sure do. 45 miles per hour, and that's for cars. I, I probably should have put that. Oh, I did put cars in there. So 35, 45 miles per hour for cars is correct. Um, Semi-trucks actually have to stay in the right-hand lane, turn on their four-way blinkers, and travel at 20 miles per hour. So if you've ever crossed the bridge, you'll see those semi-trucks over there with those blinkers on. <coughs> All right, let's do the next one, Elliot. We're doing really good. What other conditions besides high winds may cause the bridge to be shut down temporarily? It's too sunny, there's a traffic accident, there's falling ice, or bridge maintenance. We see some answers coming in. I think we've got a couple more people who can still vote. Three, two, one, and, ooh, this one's a little more split, but yeah. we do have the majority. So I'm sure that if there was a major accident, but it, that's part of the slower speed is to avoid major traffic accidents, right? Bridge maintenance, we'll have to ask Keith later, but I don't know that they shut the bridge down very often for bridge maintenance. But if you paid attention this past winter, they did shut it down quite a few times for falling ice. So that is one of the conditions that does happen where they sometimes have to shut the bridge down um, for those big falling chunks of ice. All right, ready for the next one. The bridge and its supports have never been hit by a ship. Is this true or false? True or false here? All right, three, two, one. Ooh, Ooh we yeah, are. That's, that's pretty close. It is false. In 1968, the Greek freighter Castilia struck the north pier of the Mackinac Bridge in dense fog. The bridge was left fine. It just had a small gouge and minimal damage, but the ship actually was damaged enough that it leaked, um, but they were eventually able to get it to continue traveling on to Chicago. All right, good job, you guys. Let's do the next one. Painting the bridge takes this many years. One, two, three, or four. Give it your best guess. I'm gonna give it five more seconds. Two, one. Ooh, this one's another one where we're split. Yeah, for sure. Well, it is three years. So it takes them three years to paint the bridge. And when the work is complete, they just start right back over again. So whoever's on the painting crew, it's a never ending job. All right, next one. Planes are allowed to fly under the bridge. This is either true or false. Mm. All right, looks like we got all the answers in and it's unanimous. <laughs> you are right, it is false. However, 
there has been a plane that did fly under the bridge. So on April 24th, 1959, one of the most talked about legends of the Mackinac Bridge happened. And this is when Captain John Blappo flew a Boeing B-47 bomber under the Mackinac Bridge. Um, Blappo was born in Muskegon and became a decorated war hero from the Korean and Vietnam War. And he famously said to his crew, I'm taking her under. Well, he did it successfully, thankfully, but he ended up losing his pilot's license over it and never was able to fly again. So, yep, planes over the top, not under the bottom. All right, next wow. one. <laughs> All right, the Mackinac Bridge offers a free driver assistance program for those who are not comfortable driving across the bridge. This is either true or false. All right, three, two, one. All right, good job, you guys. Yes, it is true. I think that's a pretty cool service that our Mackinac Bridge Authority offers for those folks that are afraid. And there are really legitimately people that are afraid of driving over the bridge. And so that's okay. We want them to be comfortable and make sure that they can get connected from the Lower Peninsula to the Upper Peninsula. All right, let's do the next one. The first bridge walk happened in June, 1958. True or false? I actually don't know this one. I don't know when the first bridge walk was. All right, three, two, one. Good job, all of you who said true. Yes, um, I thought maybe the bridge walk, you guys would all think it only happened in September because that's what we're used to, right? But nope, it started in June. Uh, the Governor G. Menon Williams led 68 people who walked across the bridge. So the first one was in June. They later on moved it to the September Labor Day walk. All right, you guys are doing great. This is the final question. Who was the only U.S. president to walk the Mackinac Bridge? Was it Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, or George H.W. Bush? This is another one I don't know. All right, let's see what the results were. So I got to tell you, I was in agreement with my guess with Gerald Ford, but it was not him. I was really surprised because I figured since he was from Grand Rapids, that would be something he would have done. But nope, it was actually George H.W. Bush. He uh, attended the Labor Day Bridge Walk and led the event in 1992. So he's the only active president that's ever crossed the bridge. So good job, you guys. Awesome guesses on that. So those are some fun facts about the bridge. So I hope you enjoyed some of those fun facts. Okay, uh, so the next thing I wanna share with you is um, one of the cool things that happens with the bridge is um, in August of every year, the Bridge Authority holds a drawing where they randomly select 25 nonprofit organizations. And these organizations retrieve, receive a tower tour certificate. Um, they can act raffle them off, auction them off, whatever it helps them raise money for their organizations. So whoever gets one of those tour tickets, it's good for two people to climb, I believe it's the North Tower, climb the tower all the way to the top to take in the view from the top of the bridge. Um, they have to do it between May and October. This is all, the only way to truly experience the thrills and views from the top of the bridge. So, um, I'm going to show you a few pictures here. This will give you a sense of what it will be like so you can start preparing. So climbing the tower. So the first step is you enter through this wonderful little tiny hatch down on the roadway. Um, so there's the start. And then, and Keith is going to help me with this in a minute because I'm not sure which order this happens in, but this is what the climb looks like. You're climbing little ladders through these little holes. There's also, oh yeah, and the hole is 12 inches by 16 inches. So Stephen, you guys are gonna have to get the measuring tape out and start measuring to make sure you can fit through the 12 inch by 16 inch holes that you have to go through to climb up the tower. Uh, there's also an elevator and it's really tiny. So I'm claustrophobic. I would have a really hard time with that tiny little space in the elevator. So it's not for those that like, are afraid of being in small spaces, that's for sure. But the reward when you get to the top and put up pop out the hatch is an amazing view. 
So I'm going to show you a video, and this actually has, we have a special guest with us today, Keith Ginnup, who works for the Mackinac Bridge Authority as part of their maintenance crew. Um, and in this video, Keith is actually um, assisting the Google Trekker, their 360 camera, assisting that crew with getting the camera to the top of the tower. So you're going to see Keith actually in this video. So this is going to give you a little bit of a sense of what it is like to climb the tower. So that's Keith actually right there. Best thing to do is if you want to get in there, yeah. and he can hand this to you and, yeah, and we'll get just... her in the elevator. Yep. And then, uh... Next one, just slide that one open. And uh, I don't... Now, when you come through here, you gotta put your arms up through first. All right. Tilt it towards you just a little bit. Ah. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it's not going. Well, okay. Just walk. Oh, okay. Alright, hold on a second. I'll get this next. Okay, and now we're going that way? Yeah, well... Okay, now we go up. So what if we went like one section at a time? Right, I can get up there and hand it up to me and then... Uh, there's enough room in these cells, I think, yeah. for both of us. So. Okay. Sweet. Otherwise, we got a rope we can pull. But I think it should know. work. I guess this is a real test, huh? I say, you already Oh, sweet. <sighs> awesome. Oh, look at that. So there you are at the top. So I want to introduce to you Keith Ginnup. Um, again, Keith works for the Mackinac Bridge Authority. I know we're a little over on time, so if folks need to go, they can. But um, I'm going to let Keith talk a little bit about um, what he does for the Bridge Authority, um, so you can get a sense of like what a, what a career might look like if you ever wanted to work on the Mackinac Bridge. So Keith, I don't know if we can get your video back on. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about what you do for the Mackinac Bridge Authority? Um, I'm on the maintenance program, uh, maintenance worker for the Mackinac Bridge, and uh, I'm a certified welder, certified crane operator, and uh, certified on the boat. So we always have a boat in the water whenever we have somebody over the side. And uh, basically on maintenance, anything they ask us to do, we do it. So what's your favorite job that you love to do? Um, 
Probably uh, changing grading. We're responsible for changing out pieces of grading when uh, they go bad. So you're talking about the grading, that's the road part across the suspension portion? Yeah. Of it? Um, yeah, each piece of grading that we change is roughly five and a half feet wide, 40 feet long, and weighs about 4,500 pounds a piece. Wow. So do you use a crane then to be able to change that out? Yeah, we have to, we have to cut squares in there so we can get to the welds. And there's over 200 welds on each piece of grading. And then once we uh, torch them, then we pill it out. And then we have to grind each one of those. And then when we put the new piece in, we have to uh, weld it all back down. Wow. So what's your least favorite job to do on the bridge? Uh, flagging traffic. <laughs> How often does that have to happen? Well, when we pull out a piece of grading, someone has to slow traffic down and it's not a difficult job. It's just really boring. And uh, <laughs> you're there sometimes for eight, 10 hours. Right. So have you walked the cables up at the top of the bridge? Like, you know, when they're going up the tower, you can get on the cables. Have you walked those before? Uh, yeah, I, all the time. I've changed light bulbs. And actually, I'm one of the guys that uh, do our cable inspections. We actually unwrap the cable, and then we drive wedges to the center of it so that they can, the inspectors can take pictures and uh, verify the condition of the cables. And then when they're all done, then we rewrap the cable. Wow. So that's the cable that I talked about earlier that had 12,580 pieces to it. Is that what you're talking about? Correct. The big cable, the big yep. main cable. Wow. Right. Okay. Um, so I see a question out here from Kristen. Um, she's asking, has the bridge been closed due to COVID-19? Uh, no, but they have suspended the Uh oh, I think we just lost Keith for a moment. Hopefully he'll log back there. on for okay. us. And I think we'll take Am this time to promote everyone as well up to. Oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah, Keith, you're back. We, we lost you for a minute. So can you answer okay. that again? Uh, they've suspended the um, driver assistance program and a couple other things, but no, they haven't stopped traffic. Okay. The driver assistance program, how does that work? So if I'm coming from um, Gaylord area, driving north on 75, how do I get a hold of the bridge authority to have somebody, you know, come escort me over, drive my vehicle over? How does that work? Just before you get on the bridge, there's a little pull-off area and there's a little, they got a little building there and it has a phone in it or the phone number and you can just dial the phone number on your cell phone if you want and you call them and they'll send somebody over coming north going south you just tell one of the toll takers that you want someone to drive you across and they'll send somebody okay excellent so everyone now is promoted to panelists and um if it's okay leanne you if you have a question you can type it into the q a if you're more comfortable with that but you're also welcome to unmute your microphone down at the bottom or unmute your, and your video if you'd like um, to ask Keith additional questions. So feel free to ask questions away again through whatever channel is most comfortable for you, talking it out or typing it in the chat. Uh, there's no plans for a pedestrian walkway, no. I know one of the questions, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, somebody was gonna ask a question. Okay, while we wait, um, I know one of the things during the presentation, have they ever shut down the bridge for an accident? Yeah, we've had to shut it down sometimes. A couple hours, we've had some bad accidents where they had to clear the bridge, so. Uh, yeah, it's been closed for usually not long, but sometimes up to two hours. Okay. And then how about for maintenance? We, we might stop traffic for eight to 10 minutes doing maintenance, but a lot of times we just close one lane. But if we need all lanes, we have shut down traffic, but it's usually only been for 
you know, the most like 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, thank you for that reminder, Sherry. Yeah, how often for high winds? Um, well, we get called in quite quite a bit, especially in November and in the spring. Um, it's sometimes we have a wind where it's like four days long, like on a weekend. Sometimes you might get called into work four or five times. And that's for escorting, correct? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times we'll start off in like a wind escort where we're just trans uh, escorting high profile vehicles and then we'll go into a partial closure and then we only let cars go across and then when the winds bit, but die back down then we let the high profiles go in an escort. So how often since you've worked for the bridge authority have you actually had to shut the bridge down for high winds and how high were those winds? Um, I'm guessing it's not that often but probably about four or five times and I think it was in 2015, we had our record wind of 130 miles an hour. Ooh, wow. Um, Kristen has another question out here. Have you ever stopped a bridge walk due to storms? They, um, they shortened it one time because of a bad weather, but they've never actually canceled the whole thing. Keith, I have a question. Do you know if, um, any animals ever accidentally get on the bridge, like deer or, or something smaller? You know? Yeah, we've had, uh, there's been a couple deer out there. I know, I think someone mentioned something like a bear went out there one time, but I know they've had raccoons and even a couple dogs have ran out there. Wow, what happens, do you know what happens in that situation? Do they just, you guys end up just having to wrangle it off of there? Or? Yeah, I mean, we try to get so that they don't go out onto the grating, but then we try and chase them back towards shore. So Keith, I'm curious, I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but if someone was interested in wanting to work for the Mackinac Bridge Authority, um, particularly in your role as part of the maintenance crew, what type of an educational background do they need? Or like, I know you have a welding certifi certification. I believe you also operate the crane. You need to do a certification for that. Is there any other like requirements in order to be able to work for them? Um, the only requirements they have is uh, you need a high school diploma and a CDL uh, license with a tanker endorsement. And the last few years, if you don't have a CDL, they've allowed you to work here for six months and get your CDL. And they've, they have in the past, I don't know if they still do it, but they allowed you to use their truck to get the CDL license. Oh, nice. Not everybody here is certified uh, as a welder. We actually have, I believe there's six of us right now that are certified to weld on the bridge. And there's only four of us that are certified on uh, operating the crane. Okay. Uh, we have a new question from Zeke. How often are there injuries to workers? Um, it's not very common. I mean, anytime that we're over the side, we're 100% tied off. So. Um, there's really there's no falls uh, they do get uh, cuts and scrapes and stuff like that but for the most part it's pretty safe I would say the most dangerous part of working on the bridge is working on the road deck itself um, being up on the towers or underneath um, you're tied off but out on the road deck traffic they're just they just don't pay attention they don't slow down so that's our biggest fear i can imagine they're probably busy take trying to take in the the scenery of crossing the bridge and not always paying attention to the vehicles around them or the workers uh, you would be amazed how many drivers are taking pictures out their sun window sunroof as they're driving underneath the towers oh my goodness and, they're the only one in the car and they're taking pictures. Yikes. Uh, Sherry is asking approximately how many vehicles a day or year cross the bridge? Um, I, I really couldn't tell you that I know there's uh, 
we go by when we're out there working they'll end up telling us we have to pull a lane because they have over 800 cars an hour and that's considered uh, a lot of traffic so normal in a normal year and if we don't have something major going on we'll start pulling lanes once traffic hits over 800 cars in one direction and that's in an hour Whew. sherry i believe i saw um that in the busy months they can have half a million a day go across and i'm going to share with you guys i found a lot of my information out on the mackinac bridge authorities website and so i'm going to put that in the chat they have a lot of other really great information out there including some of those statistics about how many cars cross the bridge so i'd encourage you, if you want to keep learning more that would be a great place to go to continue to learn more about the bridge uh, so uh, thank you so much, Keith, for joining us and answering questions. It was great to have you here. We really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're on duty, so you took a little time to take a break from work to be able to help us today. So really appreciate that. I hope you at least learned something new today and have a greater appreciation for the wonderful marvel that we have in the Mackinac Bridge crossing the Straits. And we'll see you all hopefully next week at the uh, same time, same place. So enjoy the life of the Straits and we'll see you next week.